In this video, I want to talk a little bit about Mass Effect Legendary Edition. This is, of course, the remastering of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 packaged all together in one neat bundle. We've had this for the last couple of days or so, and I've been playing it. Obviously, I have not had time to go all the way through these games in that amount of time, but I have played quite a bit, and I want to give you guys my first impressions of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Before we get into it, just a quick note, however, I did play this on PC. I did not play it on console. However, I do have a lot of information on what the settings are on consoles, so you guys can see what to expect if you are playing on those consoles, even though I have not played on them myself, and I'll be getting into that in a little bit. So the first thing I want to talk about is that all the games are packaged in one launcher. So you launch the game in Origin or Steam on PC, uh, and all the games are there. You pick the game you want, and then you start that game. So if you want to start with Mass Effect 2, for instance, or Mass Effect 3, you can. And there's actually this cool little cutscene that they've added to Mass Effect 2, and another one they added to Mass Effect 3, that's sort of like a comic recap of the events that happened in the previous game. So if you want to skip straight to Mass Effect 2, for instance, that's your favorite game of the series, you just want to get into it, you can, and there's like a little mini recap that's going to kind of fill you in on what happened. You can skip this, of course, uh, it's optional, but if you want it, it's there. Another really cool feature about Mass Effect Legendary Edition is they have a unified character creator, meaning the character creator is the same from game to game to game, which means you can create the same visual appearance if you're trying to make your character again. You, of course, can import your save from game to game to game, but if you want to make the same character for some reason, maybe you didn't play, you know, Mass Effect 1 and you're starting with Mass Effect 2, and then you decide to go back and play Mass Effect 1 because obviously you can't import backward, but you want your character to look the same, you can, so that's pretty cool. Another thing I want to mention is that they have added a photo mode to the game, so if you want to take photos or pictures of your game while you're playing, get some really cool snapshots for maybe your background or something like that for your PlayStation or for your PC, you absolutely can. Another thing I want to mention is that if you're playing on Xbox One and you decide to get an Xbox Series S or an Xbox Series X uh, and upgrade, that save file will transfer over to your Series X or S and you'll be able to keep playing the game. However, if you are playing on PlayStation 4 and you get a PlayStation 5, that will not transfer over. Your save file I guess, is separate on PlayStation 4 than it is on PlayStation 5. So if you're a PlayStation user, beware of that. The last thing I'm going to mention in terms of features that have come with the game before I get into like performance and what I think of it and all that, is that there are over 40 DLCs, all promo weapons and armor, added to this. So you're going to have a ton of DLC added to this game. There's going to be extra content for you. It's not just the regular games of these editions. It's like everything stuffed in there that you could possibly want. So there's a lot to this, and the cost is $59.99, so you're getting a lot in there for that price. Okay, talking about the performance, I want to start with Mass Effect 1 first. I'm going to kind of try and jump between these back and forth. Mass Effect 1 looks the worst out of all three games. No surprise there, it's the oldest. Um, it needed the most quality of life. You can see, uh, if you look through the, the notes that they added on things they've done to Mass Effect 1, they spent, it looks like, far more time working on quality of life improvements for Mass Effect 1, trying to kind of bring it up to par with Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. And while they did a good job and there are a lot of things added, I don't think they completely succeeded in this. First of all, you're going to notice the graphics look markedly worse. It's just a fact. It's not the end of the world. They don't look terrible or anything like that. But as you play Mass Effect 2 and as you play Mass Effect 3, by the time you get to Mass Effect 3, you're going to see just a huge difference between Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3, and that's fine. I will say also, out of all three of the games, Mass Effect 1 feels the clunkiest to play. It's the hardest to get used to, for instance, on keyboard and mouse. If you're sprinting, you can't even look around while you're sprinting. It's the weirdest thing ever, uh, and I, I just struggle with that a little bit. There's just some quality of life things there that are missing that really feel like a modern game would have. And it's probably going to be the hardest one for you to play. It's still a phenomenal game, and I think people will really enjoy it if they're playing it for the first time. But I promise you, if you can get through that first game and deal with that kind of clunkiness that that first game has, Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 really don't have that at all, and they feel much, much better. Moving along to Mass Effect 2, it just plays so much better than Mass Effect 1. You're going to notice it right away. There's a reason this is one of the best games of all time. Most people would agree that Mass Effect 2 is in the top 10 RPGs ever made. It is a phenomenal game. It feels good. It looks great. They've done a fantastic job here. I don't think people are going to have too many complaints about Mass Effect 2. By the time you get to Mass Effect 3, the gameplay is just a tad bit smoother, and the graphics are the best of this series, and you can just see it right away in the cutscenes and the way gameplay plays and all that. And it almost in some parts looks like a brand new game. Uh, in Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition, I, I was blown away. I was going like, if you would have told me this was a new game by Bioware and I didn't know what it was, I would actually think it was like, you know, probably not the cutting-edge graphics for a game, but, you know, middle of the road. I've been like, that's acceptable. I could deal with that. This is a tough one because I want to tell you to go look at the differences, like go fire up Mass Effect 1, fire up Mass Effect 2, fire up Mass Effect 3 when you're playing the Legendary Edition, but there are massive, massive spoilers in the beginnings of those games. So if you're a new player, don't do that. Just take my word for it. Watch this video, 
and you'll see it when you get there. Talking about performance and all that, I had almost zero performance issues while I was playing. There was maybe the occasional frame drop here and there, and it looks like there was maybe some audio, like it would cut in a little bit too quick in some places. But all in all, I really didn't notice much. I started playing and like I forgot what I was doing. I just got sucked into the game. There was really nothing that jarred me out of the game, and I, I just really enjoyed it. I don't know exactly what my frame rate was because I was playing on Origin and I didn't have this Steam overlay up, but it was easily 60 FPS or higher. On PC, you have a 240 FPS cap, so you can get up to 240 FPS. So if you've got a beast of a machine, this is going to play really, really well for you. Talking about consoles, on PlayStation 4, you're going to get up to 30 FPS at 1080p if you're playing in quality, and if you're playing at frame rate, you can get up to 60 FPS at 1080p. PlayStation 4 Pro is 30 FPS at 4K and 60 FPS at 1440p. PlayStation 5 is 60 FPS at 4K and up to 60 FPS at 1440p for frame rate. Xbox One is 30 FPS at 1080p for quality and 60 FPS at 1080p for frame rate. Xbox One and Series S is 30 FPS at 4K for quality and 60 FPS at 1440p for frame rate. And the Series X by itself is 60 FPS 4K for quality and 120 FPS at 1440p if you want higher frame rates. Obviously, I have not tested these myself, but if you're just looking at PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, these are going to run this game really, really well, I feel like. If you look at the power of these systems and you look at games like Returnal recently uh, and you look at Resident Evil Village recently, they've ran really, really well on these systems. I don't anticipate them having any problems with Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So far, I am really, really happy with Mass Effect Legendary Edition. It's $59.99, which effectively means you're getting each one of these games at $19.99 uh, and all their DLCs and all their promo stuff effectively which is a great price, even if you didn't buy it remastered, but you're getting a remastered version on top of that packaged all together in this nice little package. So you're getting a really, really good deal. These games can push you into the, you know, 50, 70 hours of playthrough type, you know, gameplay. That's a lot of value for your money, especially compared to some of these other remasters we've seen re recently. This is just really, really well done, in my opinion. In some ways, Mass Effect Legendary Edition makes me really, really angry. I started playing and I forgot what I was doing. I forgot I was even trying to do an impressions video and I just got sucked into the game. Completely forgot what time it was. Hours went by. And I remembered that this is what gaming used to be like. This is what Bioware used to make. And just looking at the fact that they don't make this anymore made me really, really frustrated. These sort of games, they just haven't, they don't come around that very often anymore in the gaming industry. And it made me so upset. And at the same time, I was so thrilled to have this product. If you are a fan of this series, I was getting goosebumps watching the scenes, like the opening cutscenes and stuff like that. Literal goosebumps. That was that good. And I feel like if you're a fan of these series, you're just going to love this game. You're going to love this package deal. And if you're new to this franchise, it's probably good enough in Mass Effect 1 to get you through. And once you're through Mass Effect 1, I feel like you're really, really going to enjoy Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 with very little complaints. For me, this is a slam dunk day one buy. I had no problems. The game looks great. It plays great. These are some of the best role-playing games of all time, and they are definitely a day one buy. As soon as this video goes live, if you're watching this review, there is a good chance that we're going to be playing on Twitch. Uh, the embargo is the same time. So I may start with Mass Effect 1, I may start with Mass Effect 2, I haven't decided yet. But if you want to come by, talk about the game, see it in person for yourself before it comes out tomorrow, please do.